Happy Merry Holidays, everybody. This is my annual holiday buying guide for Nintendo Switch. So what I do every year is I go out to game stores, Targets, Best Buys, GameStops, and I go and I see what's out there on the shelves. This is the first year I've seen retailers drop the price on the Switch, $275 for an OLED model that comes with Mario Kart 8 and 12 months membership. And there might be a lot of people finally buying a Switch this year because of that price drop. And if you're here watching this video because of that, I hope it helps. And this year, as it is most likely the last year, I retooled it a little bit to be just a bit more evergreen moving into the future. So I have included over 200 games, which took a long time. <laughs> Here's a couple rules. One, the game has to be a physical release that you'll go and you'll see on a shelf while you're holiday shopping. And I highly recommend while you're out there shopping in your game store, if you see any eShop cards, that's not a bad gift. And finally, the last rule of thumb is that I go by the full brand new price of each game. Because especially this time of year with all the Black Friday sales, it just gets too confusing with all of that. So I just stick to the full price. Here's how this works. We have the $50 to $60 big budget AAA banger game category. Then you have your middle of the road $30 to $40 games. And then finally, my favorite category, which is the $10 to $20 stocking stuffers. Something that's pretty easy to just pick up and throw under the tree. Within those three brackets, I'll help you out even more by giving you a must buy category, a maybe category depending on a few factors, or the avoid category. These are the games that will ruin Christmas and you don't want to ruin Christmas. That's pretty extreme. The last thing is, this is the first year that for certain games, the prices are going up. It's really interesting and I'll show you some of those as we go. First up, before we even get into the $50 and $60 category, there are three games for the Switch this year that are over that price range at a whopping $70. The first one is Tears of the Kingdom, one of, if not the best game on the console. It is a sequel to Breath of the Wild, which is another Zelda game that's also on the console. That one is $60. And yes, both of these games are forever a must buy. Then we have Ring Fit. It's $70 because the physical pack comes with a giant Ring Fit exercise wheel thing that you're going to need. Then finally, there's a Final Fantasy collection. It's $75 but it comes with six original Final Fantasy games. These are all older PlayStation 1 JRPGs. If somebody asked for it, fine. There's no need to rush out and buy it at this price. Okay, those outliers aside, let's get into the $50 to $60 category, starting with must-buy games. And in this category, I wanted to separate out brand new games that came out this year from Nintendo or exclusives to the console. So we have Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. This is the newest Zelda game from Nintendo. And arguably the biggest Switch game of the year. It's a classic old school style Zelda and you really can't go wrong with this no matter who you're buying for, a kid or an adult. Super Mario Party Jamboree. If you're buying Mario Party this year, make sure it's not Super Mario Party or Mario Party Superstars. You want Mario Party Jamboree. I'm telling you it's the best one. Next, Mario and Luigi Brothership. This is a brand new Mario RPG. It's really easy to pick up and get into. Good for kids or adults once again. They recently remade the first Monster Hunter stories and they released a dual package for $60 that has both the first and the second game. These games blend the Monster Hunter IP with something that's a lot more similar to Pokemon. They're very cartoony, they're over the top and a lot of fun. And then lastly, this next one is a new game that came out this year. It's not an exclusive, you can buy it anywhere, but it will be $60 no matter where you buy it and that's Lego Horizons Adventure. It's the Horizons game from PlayStation, but turned into Lego and available on the Switch. So that's all the new games at this price point that came out this year that I think are a must buy. But that does leave us a whole list of games that have come out since the Switch release that I still to this day think are a must buy and could fill out any game library if the person you're buying for or yourself don't have them already. And those are, as I said, Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, Mario Wonder, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Kirby Forgotten Land, and Splatoon 3. There's two Splatoons on Switch. You want to get three, not two. Xenoblade 3, which also has a bunch of DLC. So if you want to buy someone that game, you could also throw in a $20 eShop gift card to help them out. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Emphasis on the Sunbreak. 
there was a huge DLC that released for this game and they re-released the physical with it packed in. So don't get Monster Hunter Rise if it doesn't say Sunbreak. Metroid, Dread, Super Mario 3D World, and Bowser's Fury, Mario Odyssey, Super Smash, Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion 3, and Mario Kart 8. Those are all evergreen banger games and you can't go wrong with any of them. Psst, hey, hey, you, I got a secret for you. You wanna get something for free? And I mean completely free, not even pay for shipping, free. Click the link down below, use code BEAT'EMUPS FREE and I'll send you gamer subs right now. Free drinks right now. We've done this one time before. It's a limited time thing. I don't know when it's gonna happen again. Get free drinks. I mean it, <laughs> literally, it's free. Yes, I mean definitely get the free Game of Subs, but if you've already tried Game of Subs and you know you like it, you can use regular code beat em ups get 10% off. And if you buy a whole tub, you get a free shaker cup. So free drinks, free shaker cup, I mean, there's so much free. Whatever code you use, you really can go wrong. I've been drinking Game of Subs for a couple of years now and I love it. You can get them caffeine free, or full caffeine. The full caffeine is great before the gym, working out, or when I just need energy before a big edit. And the caffeine free allows me to drink water all day long with great flavors. The biggest plus that I always tell people is all these other pre-workouts or energy drinks, the scoops are so huge and chalky and when you tip it in, all that dust comes out and it's really gross and it makes the drink thick and disgusting. But Gamer Subs have just these tiny little baby scoops that has no filler chalk at Added and just the drink. So it's light, airy, refreshing, delicious. Oh, did you guys hear there's a ton of new flavors available right now? And one of them is sour candy oh, peach. Wait, the sour candy peach? That's literally my favorite. Oh yeah, I already got that. That one's awesome. I got it with the buy one, get a shake a cup free Whoa, thing. Oh, I'm gonna get two. Click the Whoops, link down below. Later. Then we move into the 50 to $60 maybe games. Each of these games depends. And I'll do my best to explain why. Starting with the brand new this year maybe games from Nintendo, that's Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. This is a fantastic game and such a great remake, but it is a remake. So the person you're buying for might have already played it, which could be why they might want it. Mario vs Donkey Kong. I don't think there's $50 of value here for a puzzle-like game when there's so many other great Marios that came out this year. Princess Peach Showtime. This is definitely for a little kid. And then Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. It's just not the best Luigi's Mansion. Those are all new games from Nintendo, but there is a ton of third-party support this year. Like Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake, that would be great for a hardcore JRPG fan looking to replay some classics. Sonic X Shadow Generations. I put this in maybe because I don't think it's worth 50 and it's already on sale for $30 or less. Epic Mickey Rebrushed, if you can get this on sale, it's another great Wii remake. Unicorn Overlord. This game is a highly rated tactics JRPG with a great art style. Style. Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection. These are old school fighters that have been repackaged and re-released. You have the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. These games have a cult following. They're more visual novel style. And I don't know if it's something I would take a risk on over some of the more easily digestible experiences in the list. And then Fairy Tale 2, an RPG set around the fairy tale anime is coming out on December 13th. Obviously I haven't played this yet, but the first one was received pretty well. So I just wanted to add it into the list. Talking about those fun subcategories, I have one here which is old games that have moved out of last year's avoid category and managed to boost themselves up into the maybe. And that's the GTA Trilogy. It had a huge update that fixed all of the issues and made it a great nostalgic way to play those initial three games. So now it's definitely a maybe if you can get it on sale. And now for all the maybe games in this category that didn't release this year, but again are evergreen and I think are great to pick up any time. It goes without saying, if you can get any of these on sale, it increases the maybe to a must buy pretty quickly. Super Mario RPG, Pikmin 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, Hogwarts Legacy, Fire Emblem Three Houses. I actually prefer this Fire Emblem over Fire Emblem Engage if you have to pick between the two. Kirby Return to Dreamland Deluxe. I put this here even though it's a great Kirby game because I would rather get someone Forgotten Land. Bayonetta Origins, Advanced Wars 1, one and two reboot. There's a Star Wars heritage pack with seven classic Star Wars games. It's a little pricey, but if you can get it on sale, Knights of the Old Republic is in here. Fae Farm. This is definitely almost a must buy 
if the person you're buying for loves Stardew Valley, or even maybe Animal Crossing. My wife and I played Fae Farm and we really loved it. Minecraft Legends. This is a real-time strategy Minecraft game. I would only be careful because it is riddled with microtransactions. And don't get it confused with Minecraft Dungeons, which is honestly a better game. Alteria Riser 3 got an 82 on Metacritic and it's actually become pretty hard to find. You might want to consider grabbing that this year if you had your eye on it. It looks like Breath of the Wild meets a traditional JRPG. Master Detective Archives Raincode. This is a fantasy mystery adventure game, kind of like the Ace Attorney games. Bayonetta 3, Live Alive, Triangle Strategy, Persona 5 Royal. Don't mix it up with Persona 5 Strikers, but that is also a good game and it's about $20 now. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Hey, if they already have Scarlet and Violet and they don't have Sword and Shield, why not? It's Pokemon. You could go even further and if they have both of those, you can get Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Also Pokemon Snap. It might just look like taking pictures of Pokemon, but it's incredibly fun. You could even go all the way back to the Pokemon Let's Go games. I still saw Let's Go Pikachu on the shelf at Target when I went today. You even have Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team. No More Heroes 3 if you can find it cheap. It's always on sale. Mario Golf Super Rush and Mario Tennis Aces. Zelda Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Don't get that confused with the other Zelda game that has Hyrule Warriors in its title. You want to get Age of Calamity. It's a direct prequel to Breath of the Wild and it's awesome. Paper Mario Origami King. I personally don't think this is worth its price, but if you can get it pre-owned for like 30 bucks, it's way better. Link's Awakening, Super Mario Maker 2, Astral Chain. I firmly believe Astral Chain is one of the best games on the system. It's an action adventure hack and slash style game. It just needs to be cheaper. Xenoblade 1 and 2 and even Torna, which was a separate prequel DLC that had a standalone release and Torna is actually getting really hard to find now. Dragon Quest Builders 2, Dragon Quest 11 S. It was on sale last year for $25. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, Yoshi's Crafted World is expensive, but it's really great for kids. Donkey Kong Country. I mean, if you just played through Mario Wonder with a friend or maybe a kid and you're looking for another similar experience, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is exactly that. And then you have the classic trifecta of Skyrim, Witcher 3, and Doom. I always like to say that these are pretty staple games for the console, especially for more adult gamers. It's just, they will be way cheaper to buy anywhere else, but what you're paying for is the ability to play them all portably. And for a lot of people, that's a huge plus. Also, it's worth noting that Doom has a sequel called Doom Eternal that's digital only and is on sale right now for 10 bucks. And Doom 1 is on sale digital for eight bucks. Those eShop cards might be handy. And now we roll into the most controversial of categories, the avoid section. These games you just don't want to buy, and I'll give better reasoning as to why so people understand. To start with another code recollection, this is a, just a very, very niche game and it wasn't received crazy well for me to be able to say it's definitely worth $60. I also think it's gonna be cheaper next year. Endless Ocean Luminous, again, received pretty poorly at about a six out of 10 most places. It is still $50 and just doesn't match up to the hype of previous Endless Ocean games. There's a new fitness boxing game coming out. It looks very very like Wii and maybe this could be fun for Pop Pop to mess around in, but for 50 bucks, I just wouldn't spend the money. Emio the Smiling Man, Famicom Detective Club, just like another code, it's a very niche graphic novel style game. I would say them asking for Emio would be the only reason to buy it. And then we have Just Dance 2025, it's Just Dance. Or Yurdian Chronicle 100 Heroes. It runs terribly on Switch with a lot of performance issues and I just don't think it's worth $60. So those were the new games games that came out this year that I don't think are worth 60, but here's a bunch of games that have always been 60, are somehow still 60, and still not worth it in my opinion. I put Red Dead Redemption here. Even though I love this port of the game, it runs so well, and it comes with Undead Nightmare, it just shouldn't be $50. This is a very old game at this point. What are we doing? If you can get it on sale closer to 20 or 30, that's perfect. Mario Party Superstars and Super Mario Party, as I said. Detective Pikachu Returns just isn't very good. I would avoid WarriorWare Move It. It's only about two to three hours long. This is a game that if I spent $50 on and my kid came out Christmas day two hours later before lunch even hits and says I'm done, I would be annoyed. <laughs> also WarriorWare Get It Together. Warrior Move It is actually better than Get It Together, but one's two hours long. 
wrong. So FC25, here's another rule of thumb. Never buy someone a sports game unless they ask for it. Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, it is not worth that price at this point. Nintendo Switch Sports, it's 40 for the digital and 50 for the physical. I do not think it's bad, but I don't think the price is worth it here. I don't even think you can find the Labo kits anymore, but it's probably best to stay away from them. Kirby Star Allies, there's so many better Kirby's. Arms, 1-2 Switch, and my favorite, WWE 2K18. Although, I've said avoid that every year because it runs technically the worst out of any game on the console. But a couple years ago, Nintendo actually removed this game from the eShop. So the only way to get it now is physically, and yeah, you guessed it, it's driving the price up. So as much as I've been saying avoid buying the physical, it might be a little nest egg, it turns out. <laughs> we are done with the expensive games. Now we'll move into the $30 to $40 range. I like separating them like this because in my mind, you could buy one of the expensive games and then two of the really cheap 10 to 20. Or maybe you could buy a couple of games here in the 30 to 40 and then one in the 10 to 20. It just gives you more options to play with when you're putting together a shopping list. And for must buy, there's only two new games. They're from third party developers that I think you can't go wrong if you buy these. And that's Balatro Special Edition. It's $30 on sale for 20 right now, or Dave the Diver got a physical release this year. Both of these games are peak indie games on the Switch, endless replayability, and so much fun. Now, since that was it for new games that came out this year, I wanted to add a fun new subcategory this year called Must Buy Indie Bangers and Staple Switch Games. And those games are Stardew Valley, Hollow Knight, Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, Hades, Dredge, Celeste, Dead Cells, and if you look for the Dead Cells Return to Castlevania collection physical that has all of the content ever released for the game. Ori collection, Subnautica 1 and 2. These games are like Minecraft underwater. Eastwood, Moonlighter. Moonlighter, I ride and die by this game. It scratches the same itch that Stardew does. Cuphead, Undertale, Cult of the Lamb. Slay the Spire is the best roguelike card game you'll ever play. Spiritfarer and the classic overcooked double pack. Be careful with the Overcooked because you can find physical releases that say download code only. You want the one and two double pack that has the games on the cartridge. Stardew Valley might just be the pinnacle Switch game and it's not even made by Nintendo. It's just so perfect for the console. All of the new games that came out in this price tag ended up here in the maybe section. You have Shimigami Tensai 5 Vengeance. It's $60 but already on sale. I've seen it up to half price. This is a game that released a couple years ago on Switch but this this pack has more content added into it. Stray, it's a game where you play as a cat in a cyberpunk world. It is a ton of fun. My Sims Cozy Bundle. The My Sim games from Wii have been remastered, repackaged, and thrown onto the Switch. My friend listed a video on that. A little to the left, Extra Tidy Edition. I actually might grab this one for Kim. It's a game where you just organize things. It's therapeutic. Ace Attorney Investigation Collections. Sea of Stars got a physical release. Goat Simulator 3. World of Goo 2, Tomb Raider 1, 2, 3 Remastered. They made the old Tomb Raider games look and play way better on the Switch. Cat Quest 3 is deceptively fun. And for anyone that remembers playing the Oregon Trail, they did a remastered deluxe edition of that game. So while looking at all the games this year, I noticed that there are some games that were in my $50 to $60 category last year that have dropped down in price, which might make them more worth buying now. And those games are Sonic Superstars, and I feel like this game is underrated because it came out the same day as Mario Wonder and no one paid attention to superstars. It's a pretty good Sonic game. Dreamlight Valley Cozy Edition. This one's dropped down $10 in price. I'm still conflicted on it because it's the only game I ever recommend that is a digital download code only. There is no way to get a physical of it. But Kim loves this game so much. And if you're a fan of Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing or these cozy games, it's just really good. Octopath Traveler 2, Dragon Quest Monster the Dark Prince has dropped down in price. And then Diablo 3, which is arguably one of the best Switch ports, and that had a big price drop this year too. Harvest Stella is the last one. This one's a mix of a traditional RPG and a farming game like Stardew. I told you I wanted to point out those games that have actually gone up in price. And I've added a little subcategory here of maybe games that have actually increased in price and they've moved up the list from 10 to 20 last year into 30 to 40. Maybe it's worth considering and grabbing them now before they get more expensive. So Cadence of Hyrule. This game was pretty cheap. I think around 25, 
$30 originally and now it's up to $40 and getting hard to find. If you've been paying attention for the last few years, you'll know that Crash Bandicoot 4, Crash Insane Trilogy, Crash Team Racing, and even the Spyro Collection have all been $10 to $20 stocking stuffer games. Well, this year, all of those are up to $35, $40 across the board. I think what happened here is the stock on these weren't moving initially, so they just dropped the price and shoveled them out for a couple years and never made any more. But the games are legitimately great, so people are still trying to buy them and pick them up, and because they're not there new anymore, it's driving up the price. Same thing goes for Tony Hawk 1 and 2 and the Bioshock collection. And then lastly, Dying Light. Now it's hard to find it under 50. So yeah, keep an eye out for those, and let me know if you notice any more. Alright, and lastly for the maybe games in this section, I have the old games that have been out for a while, but they're staple and classics. You get it by now. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, Metroid Prime Remastered, Disney Illusion Island. This game's kind of like Ori, but with Disney, and it's surprisingly great. Octopath Traveler 1, Blasphemous 2 is like Dark Souls, but in 2D. Tunic, the physical is really hard to find. I think it was only available at Best Buy, but this game is very old school Zelda style. Sonic Frontiers is usually on sale for about $20. No Man's Sky has endless amounts of content, and they're constantly updating this game. Near Automata, Crisis Core Final Fantasy 7, It Takes Two, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot's often on sale, and then Clubhouse Games 51. And now the Avoid games that cost around $30 to $40, starting with new games that came out this year. Tachia Olete Edition, I don't know how to pronounce this, but this game performs awful on the Switch. I was really excited to check it out because it reminded me of Zelda and Wind Waker. Play it anywhere else. Biomutant, it wasn't fun when it released years ago and it's still not fun now. South Park Snow Day, it's just not a good South Park game. The Patrick Star game, I don't know why they can't get SpongeBob games right since Bikini Bottom. Rugrats Adventures in Gameland, I had a tough time putting this one somewhere. I put it here mostly because I think people are gonna see it and think, oh, my kid might like this. And it's just, I mean, th this is it. There are a bunch of games that drop down in price from last year into this category that are still not worth buying. Those games are Batman Arkham Trilogy. I've seen it hit as low as $20, which, okay, at 20, maybe, but there are some severe performance issues, especially with the third game in this trilogy. Monster Hunter Stories 2, it's $30. Just get that double pack I told you about. Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1, this has dropped down to $30, but it's the worst version of the game due to frame rates. And then Super Bomberman R2, nobody needed a sequel to Bomberman R, we got it anyway, and it just still wasn't good. And then just a reminder on a ton of games that have been on Switch for a while to still not buy, Travis Strikes Again, I actually, okay, I don't see that one on shelves anymore. It's also become very hard to find. I've seen it for $70 online. Everybody one to Switch, Bluey the video game. If you find it like 20 bucks, maybe, but you can finish it in a few hours. This is definitely baby's first video game. Any game that says Harvest Moon on it, they're not good anymore. The Grinch Christmas Adventures released last year to cash in on Christmas. It's terrible, and every time I go to the store, it's sold out. Why? There's a couple games that every year I say don't buy because they're free if you just download them digitally. Those games are Overwatch, Apex, Rocket League, and Fortnite. This is the first year I'll let you know that in some cases, I may have technically been wrong because look at this Joker Fortnite pack. When I say do or don't buy something, I don't take future value into account. That's crazy. I can never recommend Bravely Default 2. It's a bias. I just don't like it. And then Little Town Hero. It's made by the people that made Pokemon and it's not great. 10 to $20 games. It's always tough to know what to do with this section because around this time of year, so many games are 20 bucks because of Black Friday. There's actually an exclusive Nintendo game in the list this year that came out this year and that's Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble. It released early this year, but it's already dropped down in price. I've seen it as low as $25 to even $18. Oh, and then there's also Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. It's done in the older style of Prince of Persia, but meshed with a newer Metroidvania, Metroid Dread type style. Another subcategory here of games that were in higher brackets that have dipped down to $10 to $20 this year, and I'm going ahead and saying they're a must-buy. Borderlands 3 Ultimate Edition. This is a solid port of the game that I don't think any one bought and it dropped down to $20. And if we're following along with some trends here, who knows how much this will cost next year. Persona 5 Tactica. This released last year at the full $50 to 
$20 price tag, and it's all the way down to $20. It wasn't received super well, it's not the best tactics game ever, but falling under the Persona brand for only 20 bucks might be a no-brainer for a fan of the genre. Mario & Rabbids Sparks of Hope, the newest Mario & Rabbids game, is down to $15 to $20. I've seen We Love Katamari Reroll and Royal Reverie, an old-school Katamari-style game that anyone can enjoy is down to 20 bucks. I'm going ahead and just saying Immortals Phoenix Rising is a must-buy. If you can find it at 20 bucks, it's a Breath of the Wild-inspired, essentially clone game. I really enjoyed this game. And then some maybe 10 to 20. I mean, we're tossing up 10 bucks here, but you never know. Darksiders 3 or any Darksider games. Nino Kuni 2. Lego 2K Drive. This one had a big price drop. That's like Mario Kart meets Lego. Game Builder Garage. I always think this one's great to get kids who are into computers or want to get into software development. It's such a great starting point where they can try making their own games on the Switch. And then the original Mario and Rabbids is always about 15 bucks. Just be careful because now it seems like the standard version of this game that you'll find out in stores only has the digital download code and says it right on the box. They never used to do that. At some point they switched it and they took the card out. And then games to avoid even with a huge price drop like Digimon Survivors dropped all the way down from 60 last year to 20 bucks this year. It is 90% a pretty average graphic novel game and not the fun Digimon game you might think that it is. And Balan Wonderworld or Wonderland, that's awful. And it's dropped down to like 10 bucks. You also have Nickel Stars Brawl 1 and 2. I've completely soured on these games, to be honest. They were fun-ish when they released, but they've had no support. Smash is just better. WWE Battlegrounds, Troll and I. I've always put Troll and I in these videos as an avoid since the start, because it's just like the worst Switch game, but I haven't seen it in years. And what would you know? It's up to $55 on Amazon. Carnival Games, it's just shovelware, but I always see it in GameStop. The Outer Worlds has been like 20 bucks for a long time. It's an awful port of the game and it's starting to increase in price. And then Wonderful 101 is also starting to increase in price. I'm still putting it in the avoid section for 10 to 20 because I think that's where that game should be priced most places. But if you look online and you try and buy it, it's not 10 to 20 anymore. I don't really know where to put some of these games to be honest. And lastly, on that note, Starlink, the physical at GameStop is still only $5. It's a toys to life game where if you buy the physical, you could buy little toys like Skylanders and blah, blah, blah. But if you just buy the standalone physical game, you get access to all of that starting pack DLC toy stuff digitally anyway. And I got to imagine this is one that will eventually get a price hike. Maybe I'm wrong. Either way, five bucks, just throw it in someone's stocking for crying out loud. Unbelievably, that's about 200 Nintendo Switch games that you might run across while you're out Christmas shopping. I don't know what you get out of these videos. I don't know if it's people actually looking for a buying guide and if I've helped you, thank you so much for watching and I'm glad. Or if it's my yearly returning subscribers and followers that just wanna see where I've placed things this year. Either way, I really have appreciated you watching these buying guide videos. I really tried to leave this list off in a much more evergreen place than I have other years. At the same time, all these games, they're all the prices are constantly gonna shift and change. It's almost gonna be interesting to look back at these lists and this final one and see how cheap some games actually were. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you at all, like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you have a happy merry holiday season. It is actually my favorite time of the year. I feel a little happier around November and December. I recently had Friendsgiving and all of my friends came and my wife and I, we cooked for everyone and it's nice. <laughs> I just like holidays. All right, love you guys. Happy playing Switch.